It's been 36 years since their skirt-ripping routine won Britain a place in the Eurovision Hall of Fame. Buck's fizz were a squeaky clean foursome dressed in clothes the colour of kids' crayons, bubbly pop stars as lively as the drink they were named after. But three decades on the fizz, as they're now known, are back on the road with a new album. And giving die-hard rockers a run for their money. Despite a few extra wrinkles, Cheryl Baker, Jay Aston, Mike Nolan and Bobby McVeigh show no signs of slowing down. We booze all night, grins Mike, the blonde heartthrob who was the first recruit of the iconic 1980s band. Mum of two Cheryl, 63, nods with enthusiasm, she claims her hardcore party lifestyle is an anti-aging remedy. She says, my beauty secret is, drink too much vodka, go to bed really late, wake up really early and overindulge. It works for me. If you asked me 30 years ago I would have said, no, I won't be pulling my skirt off at 60. But here I am. The band even claim that their crew prefer to tour with them over younger pop stars because they are more fun. We get the beers in, the curries in, the vodkas flowing, we're kicking indoors, throwing tellies out the window. We're party animals, says Bobby. Buck's Fizz became one of the UK's biggest pop acts after winning the Eurovision Song Contest in 1981 with their routine to Making Your Mind Up. The song went to no one in nine countries, and was followed by hit singles including My Camera Never Lies and Land of Make Believe. Now they have teamed up with producer Mike Stock to release a new album, The FZ of Pop. It all happened because of a tweet from a Bucks Fizz fan, said Cheryl, whose daughter Kyla, 23, wrote the track Come In on the new disc. They connected me and Mike Stock saying, how about a collaboration? And Mike responded, yeah loved her, so I messaged him saying, really? This was two years ago, it happened by chance. Songwriter Mike Stock was part of the production team Stock Aitken Waterman and created hits for Kylie, Jason Donovan and Banana Rama. The Fizz are part of British pop heritage, says Mike. They are extraordinary artists. It was so much fun working with them because they are great performers. The band say they're fiercely loyal fans, said to include Victoria Beckham and Mark Ronson, are hugely excited about the new album. J, 56, reveals that some of the band's mega fans still diligently attend as many gigs as possible. One lady spent thousands to come and see nearly all our gigs, she says. Her kennel bill was £2,500. She had four dogs and her mum was in a wheelchair. I'm not saying in any way that she's too much, but they are so passionate about coming that some of them get a little bit too close. Or they expect a little bit too much, and we don't know what they've sacrificed. We're just trying to get on with our jobs. Jay lives with her husband Dave Colquhoun and their 14-year-old daughter Josie who, until recently, adored mum's profession. My daughter is at that teenage stage, says Jay. Two years ago, she'd come and watch my shows and sing along and clap and then she's gone through the stage of not interested. It's love and hate for her because she does get teased, as you would do. I go to work and I rip my skirt off. Other people go to work and do a day's work. The band has been through several incarnations since the original members went their separate ways after a devastating coach crash in 1984. They were travelling with all their musicians on the Great North Road after a packed out gig at Newcastle City Hall when the coach they were on collided with a lorry. The impact of the crash catapulted Mike and Cheryl, who were not wearing seat belts, through the windscreen and onto the road. While no one was killed, Mike needed life-saving brain surgery and was left in a coma. Shortly after, Jay decided to leave the group. I did make my mind up, pardon the pun, in my hospital bed, says Jay, who suffered back injuries as a result of the crash. There was always a lot of animosity within the band. When we had the coach crash it seemed to get worse, when I thought that would be a time that we would all pull together. We all nearly died in that crash and I just had it. That was it. Mike developed epilepsy after the accident and will have to take pills for the rest of his life.
he has also lost 50% of his vision, which makes performing on stage a challenge as often he cannot see his bandmates. After pursuing other opportunities, the band reformed in 2004, but not without difficulty. Mike, Jay and Cheryl were embroiled in a legal feud with former bandmate Bobby G, whose wife had trademarked the name Bucks Fizz. Bobby G was in the original Eurovision winning lineup and his wife Heidi Manton joined the group in the early 1990s. They remained the legal owners of the Bucks Fizz name, which means that Cheryl, Mike and Jay have been forced to use the Fizz. Are there hard feelings? Yeah, says Mike, but Tads, I'm not going to knock him because he was a partner for 15 years. We had ups and downs, but we got on. In 2015, the group recruited former Sweet Dreams vocalist and Eurovision contestant Bobby McVeigh. So would they ever do the Eurovision Song Contest again? No, because you can't get better than winning, says Bobby. No one likes us anymore, that's the problem, says Cheryl.